Hey everyone, and welcome to Starting Personas and Their Meaning, the Persona 5 Strikers mini episode. In this series, I will be talking about the lore and importance of each party member's starting persona throughout every single Persona game. The starting personas of your party hold great meaning to the characters and draw parallels to the individual throughout the story. I've always appreciated the thought that went into deciding the best mythological or historical figure that was suited to the party member you'll be spending the rest of your adventure with. This series aims to explain the importance of these choices. In this video, we'll be going in-depth over Persona 5 Strikers' two new playable characters and their unique starting personas. I feel the need to give an extra special spoiler warning since this is a fairly new game as of the time of this recording. Strikers recently released on Steam and people might still be playing through it. If you are, put this video in your watch later and come back. Just don't forget, okay? Also, no guest for this video since it's a mini episode. Starting with Sophia's persona, Pythos of No Arcana. Pythos is less of a mythological figure or folklore legend, but rather a metaphor. Pythos were large jars in the Neolithic era of 10,000 BC to 4,500 BC. These jars were used for all manner of storage and were ubiquitous at the time. So common, in fact, that Pandora's box, an ancient Greek story of unleashing all the world's sickness and death, was originally a Pythos and only mistranslated as a box. I'll save the explanation of that tale for later in the video. As for the relation to Sophia, a Pythos is merely a container, one that can hold any number of things. Sophia is an AI found in the first jail of the game, and her memory was wiped. Her prime directive is to become humanity's companion, and fill her empty memories with knowledge of the human heart. Over the course of the game, she asks the Phantom Thieves, and Joker specifically, many questions relating to human expressions, and has an endless curiosity for the emotions of humans. Every jail's completion is marked with a question by Sophia, and a difficult one at that, relating to the human condition. The answers given to her fill up the empty vessel that ultimately becomes Sophia. As for the design, it's fairly standard. True to her persona's name, she has four floating vessels or pythos carrying the abilities she uses in lieu of a true persona. The engravings on the persona seem to be inane, but are most likely meant to represent the engravings commonly found on pythos within the Mediterranean at the time of their usage. An interesting pseudo-persona. Zenkichi Hasegawa, the gunslinging family man. His persona is Valjean, of the Apostle Arcana. Jean Valjean is the protagonist of Victor Hugo's famous novel Les Miserables, released in 1862. The story focuses on Valjean's struggle to survive after spending years in prison. He is refused shelter by all except a bishop by the name of Monsignor Millien. Valjean uses this chance to steal silverware from the man, and is caught soon after. Upon the police's capture of Valjean, Miriel claims the silverware was a gift, and makes Valjean promise to use the silverware to become an honest man. The bishop claimed to have purchased his soul, withdrawing it from evil and delivering it to God. Valjean does just that after his encounter with the bishop, after just one more theft, and under the new name of M. Madeleine opens a factory in Montreuil and brings prosperity to the town. Not far away, a woman named Fantine leaves her illegitimate child with an innkeeper and his wife, on her way to her hometown of Montreuil for work. Fantine finds a job in Madeleine's factory, but is later fired, and with growing debts she is accruing, turns to prostitution. After some time, she is arrested. Only after Madeleine's intervention is she released. Fantine falls ill shortly after, and Madeleine promises to deliver her child to her before she dies. At the same time, he hears that someone was arrested under the name Jean Valjean, and he becomes conflicted. Remember that last theft he did? Madeleine decides to confess his crimes and exonerate the accused man in a grand display, which results in his imprisonment again. Back with the name Jean Valjean, he is sent to a prison camp by the docks, but manages to escape after saving one of the dock workers' lives who fell overboard under the guise of him drowning. He then makes it his mission to save Fantine's child and deliver her to safety. That's all I'll go over with the summary of the book, but it is a good read, and there's definitely more to it than that. Zenkichi and Jean share many qualities, such as their straying from the path of truth and their true sense of justice in the face of adversity. Zenkichi spent the two years following his wife Aoi's death by first attempting to hold Owada culpable, but after threats to his daughter's life, he was forced to back down. After losing his driving force and gaining the disdain of his daughter, Zenkichi buried himself in his work in hopes that one day it would get better. His daughter's mortal danger was the only thing to snap him out of his self-hating slump and finally do what's right for himself and for the world. Jean and Zenkichi, after facing hardship, receded in life, and only after the chance to save another's life did they rise to the occasion and break free from themselves. 
Maybe part of the reason why I like this guy so much is because he reminds me of Ryotaro Dojima. Hmm. Valjean's design is that of a well-dressed French man with arms, legs, chest, and head covered in chains and cages, signifying the inciting factor of his incarceration. He wears knee-high boots and carries a revolver, most likely similar to the weapons French policemen would carry at the time. A striking design for a persona and uniquely sets itself apart from the others. Lastly, Sophia's true persona, Pandora of the Hope Arcana. Pandora was breathed into existence by Hephaestus, Greek god of fire, and with the help of the other gods, received blessings from all of them to make her extraordinary. Most importantly for this story was Zeus's gift, those being the trait of curiosity and a heavy pythos, ornately crafted and the contents of which were not for mortal eyes. On Earth, Pandora fell in love with the titan Epimetheus, brother of Prometheus, who was tasked with crafting the landscapes of the world. Over Pandora's life, the contents of the box weighed heavily on her thanks to Zeus's trait. Over time, the mystery became too much to bear and she justified her opening of the pythos by only taking a small peek and sealing it forever. Such was the draw of her curiosity. After just the first cracking of the lid, however, the contents spilled out. Horrific spirits spewed forth and circled around Pandora. Zeus had used this pythos as a vessel to store all the evils and forces of suffering in the world, and in truth, was expected to be opened. When the geyser of terror ceased, she put back the lid and sat. In the silence, she heard more from the pythos, not the wailing of curses, but a soft murmur. When Pandora opened the pythos again, a soft ray of light flew out and spread across the earth and set her mind at ease. The last contents of the pythos was hope. The correlation between Pandora's box and a self-learning AI are unmistakable and fit very nicely with the themes of Persona. So well, in fact, that this isn't the first time Pandora was used as a prominent figure in the games. <laughs> Sophia, from even the little I spoke of her previously, is nothing but curious. Her ever-prevalent fascination with the human heart and psyche were baked into her code by Ichinose. Inquiry into the human heart resulted in nothing but suffering for Ichinose, and thus leads to the inciting events of Persona 5 Strikers being Emma. That same curiosity, though, leads to the creation of Sophia, which ends up enduring longer and having far more of an effect on the world than any malevolent AI could hope to do. Sophia is the hope at the bottom of the pythos, which is even somewhat foreshadowed by you finding her in the deepest part of the first jail, the metaphorical bottom of the game's towering narrative. The design of Pandora is that of all four of Sophia's pythoses coming together in opening revealing a scantily clad woman. Pandora has the same thigh-high socks and hot pants as Sophia, with an <clears throat> revealing top connected to full arm gloves. Pandora's hands and feet are segmented with no digits as floating abstract blocks, possibly alluding to her husband's brother Prometheus' job creating the first early humans. Her head is a block with the same intricate engravings as the pythos covering her eyes, the same as the curiosity that blinded her to the warnings of Zeus. I was curious and very surprised at this persona's design. Pandora is a great fit. Alright, that does it for the new additions of the Phantom Thieves. Let me know what you thought of the new characters in the comments down below. And while you're down there, leave a like and subscribe. I really enjoyed every new character in this game. Not just Zenkichi and Sophia, but Ichinose and the other antagonists as well. The way they were all written to be misguided and flawed, but fundamentally good people was very compelling. I hope you all liked this little mini addition to the series, and stay tuned for the next bigger episode to drop, hopefully soon. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next Tony For You. Have a good one.